that bright ball of fire over your head that you don't really pay much attention to, the same one that allows you to continue your life in this world, what is it? If you've been watching the videos on this channel for some time, you'll remember that we have already asked that question twice, about the Earth and about the Moon. And what we found out was that you were born into the world of lies and complete ignorance and that you were offered the absolute minimum of knowledge required to sustain your short existence on Earth. The lack of awareness about where you live and what you're surrounded by is a part of it and this video of solar exploration is no different. This is a continuation and somewhat a conclusion of that series explaining what the Sun is and what it isn't. Unlike with other videos, for this one you'll have to occasionally look at the screen. Undoubtedly, the Sun is the only reason why everything exists on Earth. Historically and religiously speaking, it is the only thing that humans have worshipped consistently. But first, I need to tell you a short story. On December 21st, a virgin gave birth to a man and this event was announced by the star in the east and it was adorned by three kings. Later, that man had 12 disciples he traveled with and he performed miracles like walking on water, healing the sick and turning water into wine. After being betrayed, he was crucified, buried for three days, resurrected and sent into heaven. He was called the Truth, the Light, God's Son, the Alpha and Omega and so on. Most of you will recognize this story as the story of Jesus from Nazareth. We all know it. But what most of you probably don't know is that this is also the exact same story of the life of Horus, Addis, Krishna, Dionysus, Mithra, Osiris, Odin, Indra, Jao, Mikado, Eros, Cadmus, Adonis and many other deities that humans came up with throughout the ages. To understand this massive and highly improbable coincidence, we need to look at some simple mechanisms taking place right above our heads. As the days get shorter during winter, eventually reaching its lowest point in the sky on December 22nd, the sun visually stops moving for three days while being located not far from the Southern Cross constellation. On December 24th, the brightest star in the sky, Sirius, aligns with three brightest stars in Orion's belt constellation that in ancient times used to be called the Three Kings. The alignment of these four stars points to the place where the sun rises on December 25th. Three kings follow the star in the east, indicating the location of the birth of the sun. On December 25th, the sun starts moving again in the sky, initiating the process of days being longer and announcing the return to spring and warmer days. Virgin in Latin means Virgo and it is a constellation of stars that used to be referred to as the House of Bread. It represents the time of harvest between August and September. The Hebrew translation of this phase is Bethlehem. Virgin birth, salvation, resurrection, crucifixion, it's all right there. Human religions are and have been nothing else but simple astrology and the story of the sun's travel across the sky. Easter is the spring equinox, Christmas is the birth of a new season, 12 disciples are the 12 constellations of the zodiac, the Christian cross is a pagan spiritual symbol of the cross of the zodiac. The crown of thorns are sun rays. The Bible is an astrotheological amalgam of knowledge and fables. Think, what is infinitely bigger than you, far away yet still controls your life, is there even when you don't see it, has the power to both destroy and create, requires to avert your eyes and not look straight at it. What is the shining light in your life? Religions are simply recycled rituals of the worship of the sun. This is the reason why I recently uploaded the religion versus spirituality video criticizing heavily human religious faith. The stories these religions are based on are clearly not true. So what is the truth? Before I tell you this, just a quick reminder that I make these videos for you. It's my job to wake you up and offer you explanations about your place in life. In return, I ask for donations and financial support as this is my only job. It takes a few seconds of your time and it allows me to continue my work for you. You can join Patreon or Subscribestar for monthly membership or use Cash App, PayPal or Bank and Crypto Transfer. It means very little to you, but it means everything to me. If you want to know more or if you want to discuss which areas of your life are a lie and how to get out of it, schedule a donation funded chat with me. You will find all links in the video description. 
I hope I can count on your generosity. Thank you. The official story goes like this. The size of the sun is supposedly 875,000 miles and it is 93 million miles away from Earth. The length of Earth's trajectory around the sun is 584 million miles and Earth revolves around the sun allegedly at the speed of 88 times the speed of sound, 64,000 miles per hour to be precise. There's a little problem with all of that because there's absolutely no proof for any of it. None. It is all data offered to you by government agencies and you're expected to accept it without ever questioning the validity of it. There isn't a single person on Earth who can feel this cosmic movement. What's more, Earth supposedly revolves around the Sun on an elliptical trajectory and changes that crazy speed every few months by thousands of miles per hour. A single event of acceleration or deceleration like that would instantly destroy all life on Earth. If Earth was the size of a tennis ball, then the Sun would have to be the size of a small family house half a mile away. That means that the Sun in reality should look like a tiny dot in the sky, more like a star rather than a large disk that we see from Earth. We see the Moon and the Sun as the exact same size. They always keep the same distance and travel at the same speed. They follow the same path when visible in the sky throughout the year, which is called solar and lunar analemma. Given that one of the objects is 400 times larger and 400 times further, and given your fixed perspective, the conclusion is very simple. This is an impossibility. The official story about the size and the distance of the Sun is not true. Despite what you've been told your whole life, heliocentrism is a fairly young ideology that's not even one century old, and throughout history, geocentrism has been the dominating narrative. A lot of the so-called evidence to the contrary has been fabricated to create this primitive ideology. There are actually still people alive who remember being taught at school that the sun moves across the sky. You can still ask them about it. Here's what seems to be true. The Earth's movement around the Sun is not felt by any human or organism on Earth and there is no experiment that can prove that it actually takes place. All of the weird behavior of the Sun becomes extremely simple the moment you change the model of the Sun spiraling over a flat plane. Our Sun is small and close. We can observe a hotspot on the surface of the clouds beneath the Sun. This only happens with a small source of light right above. Both from the ground and from the air, we can see that the sun rays are not parallel. The sunlight would never behave like that if it was not right above the clouds. The official scientific explanations oscillate between parallel rays and angled rays depending on what needs to be explained. This makes no sense. The sun brightly lights up a relatively small area of the Earth and it generates all kinds of energy like heat, electricity and magnetic fields. This is only possible when the sun is small and directly above the surface. This energy locally creates the tides, generates the winds, regulates the climate and electrifies the air. And this could not be done by an object 93 million miles away from Earth. Both the sun and the moon carry energy with them we don't know much about. The sun is positive and the moon is negative given their effect on life on Earth. The yin and yang symbol represents that. This is easily observable with different colors of the sky during the day, which proves that both the Sun and the Moon are close because they interact with atmospheric gases around them. Depending on the location and atmospheric conditions, they turn the sky white, yellow, orange, red, purple, blue and green. The Sun sets and rises across the sky following a straight line. If we were revolving around it, it would need to be a curved line. The sun doesn't set and rise the way you were told it does. It clearly moves away and it appears to go behind the horizon because of your limited perspective. The same happens with ships disappearing behind the waterline. Zooming in, you will often see them both still over the horizon. In some places on Earth, the sun visibly shrinks to a tiny dot and disappears, clearly indicating arrival in the morning and departure in the evening. You do know that clouds go beyond the horizon and you do know that they're right above your head, traveling along a straight line. You observe them rising and setting every day. All you need to do is connect the dots and see that the sun does the exact same thing. 
The existence of seasons on Earth proves that the Sun is here, above us, not in some distant galaxy. The Sun during summer will quickly cause sunburns, but the same Sun in winter will not even melt ice on the roads. If the temperature differs so much with only such a tiny distance change between seasons, how can the heat travel tens of millions of miles and affect only a part of Earth exposed under a certain angle? It can't. This is only possible with a small, local sun radiating heat right underneath it. According to the official story, the Earth is a tiny grain of sand positioned right next to a giant star. If what happens during Earth's seasons was true, every night half of the Earth would freeze and the other half would be heated evenly during the day. The Earth's tilt angle would have zero impact with that kind of energy next to us. What about solar storms, flares and so on? All these pictures by cosmic agencies we see of a crazy fireball in the sky are fake. You can use filters and observe the sun yourself. It is a bright circle with the same spot in the middle. That's it, you won't ever see anything else. There are no solar storms and no solar flares. There is much more evidence proving that the official story makes no sense. But I want to direct your attention to something else. The Sun takes about 365.24 days to complete its journey and it takes 29.53 days for the Moon to do the same. Every culture historically has had a problem with this fractional irregularity and adding a day every four years doesn't really solve the problem because it extends a year by one day every 16 years. This is why leap year has been introduced. To justify this irregularity, a theory called changes in eccentricity has been proposed, which says that the shape of the Earth's orbit around the Sun changes from circular to elliptical every 100,000 years. The truth is that the Sun's path across the sky is not a true circle, but it's a slightly elliptical path where the Sun moves 14 minutes slower in February and 16 minutes faster in November. This is the analemma phenomena mentioned before. But it turns out that this cycle actually has been changing throughout the last few thousand years and once added up and calculated, it created something called the curve of recovery. It's a pattern of oscillation of the position of the Sun at its highest point in the sky throughout the last 5000 years and it shows a stabilization effect of the Sun's position after some kind of a great disturbance. Could it be the moment when the old world was reset on Earth's timeline? It is possible that this is the reason why it appears that our Sun is out of sync with the time. This might be a result of some kind of a great historical event estimated to have happened a few thousand years ago that changed the Sun's course. It might even be possible that it's a stabilizing effect after the Sun was put into the sky. It could be that the Sun was created together with the rest of the Earth, but that's just my hypothesis. It is interesting that the Stone Age calendar and many others were created exactly around that time. Why do you think so many cities feature an obelisk today? Maybe because they're giant clocks measuring the sun's movement. It's important to understand that our ancestors have known about this as they were building or turning many cathedrals into heliometers that were measuring this deviation. What we consider to be religious temples are actually measuring devices keeping track of the sun's movement. The architecture around us proves that this knowledge is kept hidden from us. We don't know what happened and why this is being measured, but it means that the truth about the Sun is much more important than we know, especially that the Sun worship in science and culture continues to this day. The Vatican worships the Sun and the multiple Statues of Liberty in New York, Paris, Japan and so on are Sun worshipping statues, as was the Colossus in the past. In fact, the same figure is featured on many buildings throughout the world. The Bible, one of the oldest books known to man, not once mentions that the Earth revolves around the Sun, but it does talk about how the Sun moves across the skies all the time. And here I would like to propose my own personal theory regarding what the Sun could be. It goes like this. If we keep magnifying matter and eventually get to the size of the atom, we will see that when zooming in further on its structure, we end up with empty space which would indicate that the atom and all matter is in fact energy. I think that if we were to do the same with the Sun, we would end up with the same empty space and energy. I believe that it is possible that the Sun might be the most dense and concentrated source of energy on Earth. 
And since this energy is metaphysical in nature, it might be possible that we are living under the physical embodiment of the divine force. It is possible that God, or this reality's manager, is the sun and this is why you are surrounded by sun-worshipping art and architecture. But if we assume that the sun is not a sphere, we could risk a theory that it is a reflection of a powerful light source from the center of the earth. It is possible that the reason why we're not allowed to access the North Pole is that this is where the source of light comes from. And it might be possible that the sun we see is nothing but a powerful beam reflected of a parabolic dome over the flat earthly plane. Maybe this light spot is generated directly by the firmament. There are many possibilities. I'm saying this because it seems that the moon and the sun hovering above our heads violate every possible law of physics. And so far, we've learned that almost everything we find out is based on simple and commonly accepted science. So why is this subject so important that it made me upload three videos about it? It's important because it exposes the network of the governmental, media and scientific institutions that are involved in social engineering and it should help you understand who you are being lied by and what is being done to the rest of your life. If you think that it's just one aspect of reality you're being indoctrinated about, you're wrong. Everything else is socially engineered for you, including your own mind. It's important because it means that the whole system your life is based on is fake. And it shows and exposes an agenda that you're unwillingly a part of, where you need to ask yourself, is this beneficial or detrimental to my well-being? If you believe the official narrative, you'll eventually need medication to get in and out of bed. It's important because it gives you a choice of belonging to a tiny group of empowered, conscious and intelligent individuals, or belonging to a huge majority of uneducated and sleepwalking robots. It lets you identify the liars and con men who don't care about you and want your suffering. It stops you from sacrificing yourself on the altar of mindless egocentrism and selfishness, empowering you to be the true you and giving you the tools to wake up and live the real life, not its silicon worshipping replica. It's about freeing your body and your heart from the illusion and living the life you deserve. It takes you out of this superficial and materialistic paradigm of endless consumption, wastage and nihilism. It moves you from the place of complete indifference to a place of extreme importance, the place of meaningful creation. It shows intelligent and purposeful design that you are in the center of. It's important because it shows that the sun exists for you and your benefit. It means that all of this you see around yourself was created for you to take advantage of. It allows you to reconnect with the divine instead of concentrating on the physical aspect of this fairy tale based reality. It makes you accountable to the creator. If not, you'll have to join the ranks of those who want to stay unaccountable to anyone and anything, and there are consequences of this. It means that people like me and others who feel connected to the sun actually follow their divine understanding of reality and can relax, not being scared of being ostracized and treated like crazy. It puts you in the center of your existence and it makes you feel empowered by understanding that your whole life has an important purpose and everything around it exists only so that you can fulfill it. You have a huge number of important lessons to learn during this short existence on Earth and discovering the truth about your world will immensely increase the pace at which you will accomplish this. Have you noticed how the sun rays relax you? The sun gives you life and keeps you healthy and it takes care of you in a divine manner. The one who looks after you, loves you, and wants you to thrive. You're made in love. Thank you for watching, and on your way out, please consider sponsoring my work so that I can continue uploading these important messages. If all of these messages have resonated with you, talk to me. All links in the video description. Don't forget to subscribe and follow. Like this video and share it with everyone you care about. For merchandise, go to shop.b434.com. Leave your email address at news.b434.com. Visit the website of the artist and the musician I featured here. For more info or contact, visit b434.com and join 434 social media on YouTube, Facebook, BitChute, Instagram, Spotify, Snapchat, Twitter, Reddit, Discord, Telegram, VK, TikTok, Tumblr, LinkedIn, Dailymotion, SoundCloud, and a few other ones you can see on the screen now. All links in the video description and at b434.com.